if you want to add some colour to your 3D printer, maybe for that awesome time lapse, or maybe just for style. This is your guide for using NeoPixels for Marlin, Clipper, and RepRap firmware. Previously, in various mainboard guides, I've briefly covered NeoPixels. I also covered them in an LED guide a while ago, but that's a little bit outdated now. So when I had the opportunity to try out a new user-friendly NeoPixel product from TH3D, plus a request from viewer Brian to add a NeoPixel instruction page to my website, I decided to make the video. The significant thing is that I've fitted NeoPixels to three different 3D printers with three different types of firmware. So on the page, you'll see sections where you can select your firmware to get the matching instructions. So please use that plus the timestamps below to get the exact information you need. Let's get started. Let's start with the basics. What are NeoPixels and how do they work? NeoPixels are the brand name given to Adafruit's line of addressable RGB LEDs. This is a regular analog RGB LED. It has a common pin and then pins for red, green and blue. And when the supply voltage is buried between them, we can mix colors, just like the pixels of the screen you're watching this video on. NeoPixels, however, are a lot more powerful than this. The key difference is that NeoPixels are digital rather than analog. A command can be sent with instructions for each pixel in the strip, and that means we can have animations and color gradients which aren't possible with analog RGB LEDs. I've used NeoPixels in several projects, including the TT sign you see behind me in every video, and I've got a guide on how you can replicate that. In the past, I've bought NeoPixels in a big roll and had to cut them up and solder on wires to make strips up for 3D printers. But in this video, I'm trying out the Easy Neo RGB printer lighting kit from TH3D, which retails for 25 US dollars. The difference here is that this product is designed and made to suit 3D printers. We have a pre-crimped wiring harness to go from the strip to the mainboard. We have M3 bolts and T-nuts to attach it to extrusion. We have covers to hide the wiring. And then we have the strip itself, containing 15 NeoPixels and designed to bolt directly to the frame of the 3D printer. As you're about to see, mounting this kit is very easy and very neat. Mounting the Easy Neo strip is a piece of cake. Simply prepare the M3 bolts and T-nuts, pick a spot on the frame and tighten the bolts. For an i3 style machine like an Ender 3, the underside of the top frame is a great spot so the near pixels can shine down and illuminate the print area. On the Super Racer Delta printer, I actually ran twin parallel strips. They were bolted to two of the uprights and if you're using an unusual position like me, make sure to move the printer through its range of motion to ensure sufficient clearance. With the Neo Pixel strip mounted in place, we can now plug in the connector from the cable. The supplied strips work really well in 2020 extrusion to hold the wires in place and out of the way. For the Delta printer, these weren't long enough, but I found I had a similar product sitting in my drawer. However you handled the wiring, just make sure that it's secured properly out of the way so no moving parts from the printer can damage it. Now we're going to move on to the wiring. Let's start with the data pin, which is usually coloured white or blue. Its job is to communicate instructions for the colour and brightness of every individual pixel, so how does it do it? Let's say we want to light up four pixels in red, orange, yellow and green. The entire message is sent to the first pixel, which lights up red, trims this instruction and sends the command down the line. The next pixel lights up orange, trims this from the set of instructions and continues sending the list down the line. This pattern continues until all of our LEDs have received their instruction and are illuminated all from a single data pin. Of course in real life it's much faster than this. Next up are our red and black wires to supply 5 volts. But it's not as simple as simply connecting to the 5 volt supply of your main board because each light consumes around 60 milliamps and that stacks up very quickly. On a 15 pixel strip like we're using we need just under 1 amp to power it. Main boards already have onboard 5V regulators, but they're limited in how much current they can supply. Other 5V devices might already be attached, like a BL Touch, a servo, or even a 5V fan. To make sure we have sufficient power, it's highly recommended to use a separate 5V supply. A common option is an adjustable buck converter, and I already have a guide on how to set these up. That's what I used for one of the printers in this video feeding in the 24 volt power supply and outputting 5 volts as required. 
The printed mount on the bottom allows it to be cable tied to the base of the electronics enclosure. Another option is the TH3D Easy Neo 5 volt universal power kit. These are cheap and simple. Feed 12 to 24 volts in one side and 5 volts comes out the other, supplying up to 1.5 amps. I simply soldered mine in line for one of the NeoPixel cables, crimping on ferrules to plug into an unused 24 volt power port. For the final printer, I was using an SKR version 1.4 and the optional DC DC mode add on. When this jumper is in place and the jumper moved to match, additional 5 volt current is available for accessories such as NeoPixels. If you're using a TH3D EasyBoard Lite mainboard, you can use the Easy Neo Power Module. It plugs into a spare port on the EasyBoard, borrows additional 24 volt power from a fan port, gives you a new port to plug in that original fan, and then supplies a port with enough power to power the NeoPixel strip. I modified the end of the loom depending on the printer, in this case adding male to pont connectors to go into the buck converter and preparing a wire splitter for the data pin which could plug into the header I was using on the mainboard and then the two data pins for the NeoPixel strips could plug into it. As for where to plug in the data pin to the mainboard, some boards have dedicated NeoPixel ports so this is obvious whereas others don't, so you can look at the diagram and identify ports that aren't being used. And for the Delta printer, this was a servo port or pin 2.0. Never assume the pins in your loom just match your main board. View the pinout diagram and double check the wiring to avoid letting out the magic smoke. On to firmware. If you're using TH3D hardware as well as a unified firmware, your job here is going to be really easy. Simply uncomment the line Easy Neo underscore 220. If you're working with the vanilla version of Marlin, firstly, I've got a video link to help you set up for that. And secondly, head to configuration.h to make the required changes. We need to uncomment define neopixel underscore LED. For this Easy Neo strip, we set the type to Neo GRB, the amount of pixels to 15, and then your pin is going to vary from mainboard to mainboard. Optional but recommended is enabling the NeoPixel startup test when the printer boots, it will quickly flash three colors and this indicates that everything is wired and configured correctly. Just below this section, you can optionally enable printer event LEDs. This will allow the printer to light up automatically depending on its state. Finally, in configuration advanced, if you're using an LCD menu, you can enable LED control menu. This will add a lights option to the main menu with shortcuts for turning the lights on and off as well as providing a range of presets to quickly change between colors from the menu. For Clipper, we're going to follow the link to the configuration reference and then copy the example section for NeoPixels. We paste it into our printer configuration and then customize it to suit our printer. I've chosen to call my setup Neo because it is the one. Your pin will differ depending on your mainboard. And for the Easy Neo strip that we're using, the chain count is 15 and the color order is GRB. We now save and restart Clipper. For RepRap firmware, it's a little bit tricky. If you're using Duet hardware, some boards have support for NeoPixels and other ones need add-on Arduino modules. However, if you're running the Team Gloomy RepRap port, and that means using non-Duet hardware, you have a lot more freedom. For this port, you need to edit your board's TXT file and add LED.NeoPixel pin and set it to the pin that you're connecting the data pin to. For either version of RepRap firmware, the next step is more or less the same. In config G, we need to add the line M150, followed by either X1 or X2, depending on what hardware you're using. After this, save and restart the firmware. That's our firmware setup done, so now we'll move on to how to control the NeoPixels. On the companion webpage, you'll find instructions for Marlin, Clipper and RepRap, but each of them works through exactly the same examples, and you can copy and paste each command, try them out and learn as you go. In my opinion, overall, Marlin does this best and is easiest to control. We have the LCD menu with all of the presets, and if you enabled it, we have the printer event automation. As the bed is heating up, it will go from blue to purple, and then as the hot end is heating up, it will go from purple to red. And once the print starts, the LEDs will switch to white to illuminate the bed. Despite this, we can still use the M150G code to manually set the colors of the NeoPixel strip. The most important parameters are R, U and B, which are red, green and blue. And these need a number between 0 and 255, which relates to their brightness. Via terminal, if you send the first example, the entire strip will be illuminated purple 
as we have max red and max blue, but no green. Setting R, U and B all to zero has the effect of turning off the strip. If you want to try it, you can copy and paste the commands one by one to light up one pixel at a time. That's because they include I for index, and that targets one particular pixel, and in Marlin, the pixel closest to the plug is addressed as zero. Eventually, once you've pasted in all of the commands, the near pixel strip will be illuminated in three different color bands, something not possible with analog RGB LEDs. For Clipper, the command we want is set underscore LED. The important parameters are LED. This is the name you previously used, in my case Neo. The words red, green, and blue, they dictate the value of each color. And here the values range between zero and one. This is all we need if we want to set the entire strip. For this example, we set the entire parallel strips to purple, just like we did for Marlin. And to turn it off, we just set all of these values to zero, which is nice and easy. If we want our colors to vary across the strip, we need to use index in the same way as the I argument for Marlin. The only difference is in Clipper, the index starts from one rather than zero. The last important parameter is transmit, and if we include it and set it to zero, we can enter a long sequence of commands, but until we send the final one that's missing transmit equals zero, the lights won't actually update. Finally, RepRap firmware, which uses the same M150G code as Marlin. And like Marlin, it uses R, U, and B for red, green, and blue, with values between zero and 255. A parameter that's unlike the others is S, which sets the quantity of pixels to set the color for. Another command is F, which stands for follow on. And if we include F0, it tells the firmware we have finished sending commands and we're ready for the lights to be updated. Therefore, to illuminate our entire strip, we send M150 with our color combo, tell it to set all 15 pixels and that we won't be following on. Like our other examples, this will illuminate all in purple, and we have a similar command with all of the color values at zero that will turn all of the LED strip off. If, like the other examples, we want to divide the strip into three different colors, RepRap firmware makes that fairly efficient. We set our first color and we tell it to do so for five pixels, and with F1, we tell it there's more commands to follow. We set our second color for the next five pixels and that there's more commands to follow. And finally, we set our third color for the last five pixels and by including F0, we tell it that we're finished and we would like the LEDs to illuminate. If you want a pretty rainbow pattern, it makes more sense to store the commands in a macro. I've set up one here with a gradient, changing one pixel at a time, and it's much more efficient to store it in a file like this so it can be run with a single click. Remember that you can also launch macros from the start or ng code of your slicer. I understand some people won't be interested in this mod because it doesn't affect print quality. Others, however, may like to use RGB to style their print area, or maybe just to create more aesthetic time lapses. It's just great to know that whatever firmware you use, that NeoPixel support is available. If you're keen to try them out, let me know in the comments and make sure you use my free website linked down below. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy multicolor 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.